Oh, listeners, have we got a show for you this week. Boy, am I proud of this episode. Episode 61. There is highs, there is lows, there's laughter, there is tears. At one point, uh, the file becomes a bit corrupted and there's a bit of a crackle. So get ready for that. Um, (laughs) Couldn't couldn't do anything with it because it was integral to what I was saying. So anyway, be prepared. I'm happy we're all back. You're hearing my voice. I'm speaking to you through your headphones or perhaps uh, a speaker. Uh, Maybe someone has transcribed the intro of this episode and you are reading it from a piece of paper because you're in prison. Well, I hope you're having a nasty time in prison for whatever you did there was surely uh, wrong. Uh, And I hope that one day uh, (laughs) you rot there. Sorry, prisoners, that's just how I feel. Anyway, um, the Potter Vision boys are going on tour for a full list of tour dates. You can visit pottervision.com if you'd like to gain exclusive access to secret Potter Vision podcasts. You can go to our Patreon, patreon.com forward slash pottervision, where there's a whole host of goodies there and you'll be helping support the Potter Vision boys. Leave us a review. Why not? Follow us on social media, Instagram, Twitter, whatever you want. Uh, anyway, here is episode 61. time is it? They're going to kill you. <laughs> oh dear. Hello! <laughs> Welcome to the Potter Vision Podcast, the podcast where every seven days, this man opposite me, Tom Lawrenson, and myself, Lucas Kirkby, we look at a chapter of the Harry Potter books and we go off on all sorts of other topics of conversation. This week, we're on episode 61. It's chapter four of the Goblet of Fire, Back to the Burrow. 61. 61. 61. Yeah. Tom, how are you, may I ask? I'm all right. A bit tired. A bit tired. Went on a journey last night. To, uh, went to London during the day. Oh, that there, London. Yeah. I went to Stockport Station to get the train. Yep. Oh, she was late. Oh, how late was she? 40 minutes late. Oh, that's nasty. 40 minutes late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get on the train, uh, find a seat. I'm facing backwards. Not normally my style. No, no. Listeners, you know this about me. I am... The possibility comes that I might get a bit of a dicky tummy Mm. if I go backwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But sit down, right? Right near the door... Some other lad gets on. I see him get a seat. A lot of people are stood. A lot of people are stood, right? Mm. We rock up in Wilmslow. Yeah. Oh, we, yeah. Are we in Wilmslow? Maybe. One of the stops on the way. Yeah. Little old woman gets on. Oh, yeah. We're talking 60 years old. <laughs> 60 years old. She's ancient. <laughs> Can you imagine such an age? <laughs> I look at her. I think nothing. Yeah. I think, I think nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The other lad who'd sat down... He sees her, he springs to his feet, and he insists that she take his seat. Yes, yes. It hadn't even occurred to me that that was an option. No, no. <laughs> was she stood up, was she? She was stood up because there was no seat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In my head, I was like, well, I guess a little old woman has to <laughs> stand <laughs> for the two hours and a half to London. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he stands up, and she's like, no, no, I couldn't, I couldn't. And he goes, no, you must. So she takes his seat. Yeah. You know, he then stands and reads what he looks to be reading from his own journal. Amazing. From the whole, like, for the whole journey. I wonder what I was up to last month. Let's have a look. Yes. Musing on his own opinions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I sat there at a table. Um, at one point, I decided to go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. So I lay down on the table, put my head on the table, went yeah, to yeah, sleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I did go to sleep because I woke up doing these breaths. 
But I did not feel <laughs> out of ordinary. Yeah. Because although I was the only one who slept on the table, yeah. the other three around me all took turns on having a sleep at some point. Lovely. A lovely four-way rotary sleep system. The train back was also delayed. Oh. A good 30 minutes. Yeah. That, that'll show me. <laughs> <laughs> that'll bloody show yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, me. Now, were all these delays attributed to the recent storms that we've been having? There's no way of knowing. But let me tell you this. <laughs> uh, I'm looking, I'm at Euston, looking up at the board, waiting for yeah. what platform I'll be on. Ugh. Because I want to get to my seat. Because there's a load of football hooligans at the station. Ugh. Chanting, intimidating people. I think they were Manchester United fans. Yeah, they were Manchester United fans. And they were holding their hand up, which to me... Yeah. Looked a bit far right in a way. Houston, we've got a problem. Yeah. Hooligans. So I'm waiting and everyone's feeling a bit anxious because they're chanting. It's late. It's like eight o'clock. And yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. oh, what's yeah. this going to be like? Then, look left. A guy gets eye contact with me. And yeah. he goes, oh, it's you. Yeah. And I'm like, it's me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he was right. And he goes, <laughs> he goes, TikTok. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes, I can't believe it. He goes, my heart's just skipped a beat. Did he? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he goes, my heart's just skipped a beat. Yeah. And he goes, I follow you on TikTok and Instagram. And I'm like, cool. And he goes, I'll show you. I'm like, I believe you. <laughs> Why would any... He didn't know my name. But... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then he goes, and then a woman behind me, not even, didn't know him. Yeah. I didn't know her, goes, well, I follow you on TikTok. Yeah. We surrounded by him. Oh. Tom was walking around Houston Station thinking these hooligans were Man United fans. But if you look at those scarves, they say Tom Lawrenson, Tom Lawrenson. They're Tommy Laurie fans. No, 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 no. Because oh. he also said, Tom Lawrenson, hang him. They were going to hang me with the scarves. Oh, no. They wanted me dead. Yeah. What does that all mean? Oh, what does it mean? Mean Nana, we don't know, but you, you should make me think. You know that it's always going to be correct if somebody comes up to you and says it's you, no matter who's saying it to you, they are <sighs> always correct. It is me. Well, I was affected by these storms. There's been a storm ravaging the UK called Storm Arwen. I believe it's Welsh. And Arwen. Arwen. Yeah. Spell that name for me. A R. W E N A R W E N Arwen to the layman. Arwen to the layman. <laughs> Arwen to the Welshman. Arwen. Arwen. Um, it was bad. I was driving home from Derby on Friday. Home is in North Wales, and there was uh, crazy winds blowing the car about on the road. There was hail at one point. I was point. thinking about you on Friday night. Were you? Because I was driving as well. Yeah. And I'd reduced my speed on the motorway to 40 miles per hour. That's responsible. I thought to myself, if Lucas Kirkby was driving right now, yeah. he would be going 70 miles per hour. I was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they always say there are little signs along the road. It says, drive to the conditions. And I look at the conditions and I think, bloody hell, I need to get home quicker. Mm. Because it's windy. <laughs> It's rainy. Mental. It's hailstony. Uh, well, yeah, it was crazy. I had to drive around two fallen trees on my journey. Jesus Christ. Fallen onto the road. And uh, pretty bad. Pretty bad stuff. Uh, but yeah. It'd be sad if your driving led to your demise. For who would continue the Bot Vision podcast? Well, I'm hoping that the listeners, I feel like, you know, you can do those things where if you put in a whole series of books into a computer, they can like write their own little book. Mm. Well, I believe technology is so good at the moment. You've got it. You've got 60 episodes of me talking. <laughs> Stick them into a computer and just have a computer do it. I think I think they could probably do a better job than me. No. Less stuttering. No, you don't stutter. More. I, 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 I do. He's made me look an arsehole. <laughs> <laughs> you know, more consistent volume, more professional. Mm. Why not replace me with AI technology? Well, you know, you've got a heart that beats. 
You've got skin that grows hair. <laughs> You've got eyes that shed tears. Yeah, yeah. No AI can replace that. No, that's true. But maybe we'd have to get each Potter Vision listener on the show to re- like one each week. Well, that'd be fun. <laughs> that'd be good. Well, I think we almost heard what a robot retelling of us two would sound like when we had that lovely message from uh, Marge and Shelley a few weeks ago. Robot. They had the stock phrases. They had the Spanish translations. The rating. It was good. I think it'd be it's something Marge like in it, Shelley. <laughs> <laughs> That's our lovely impression of you. You're welcome. Um, yeah. I also want to have a little conclusion to a little mini arc going through the Pot Vision podcast from this episode and the previous one. Last week, I told you of a peculiar email I had. Last week, Lucas awoke from his chamber. His French teacher had got in contact with him. Lucas, I need you to inspect my feet. I've missed you, dear boy. <laughs> yeah. You replied, of course, mademoiselle. <laughs> yeah. Well, because it was in Welsh and because it didn't have any link to click and because it didn't actually ask for any information, I assumed that she had sent it to me by accident. Turns out it was a spam email. Ah. We got another email uh, from her sent to about 100 people saying, I'm very sorry, someone has sent a spam email. Had you replied yet? No, I'd not replied, and I still haven't. Oh. But this is now leading me to think, what is the purpose of this spam email? Why would somebody just email random people asking for an appointment to do with their broken foot? Sounds like someone's a feet freak. Maybe they're a feet freak. But for those of you worried about my old French teacher's feet, they're absolutely fine, nothing wrong with them. Healthy. So healthy, she's got athlete's feet, or athlete's foot. So now, listeners, feet of an athlete. you and I can walk <laughs> away from this, and when people say, how is Lucas? We'll go, he's perfectly fine. His French teacher's feet are as strong as ever. <laughs> and, we can, and then they'll all say, thank you to us. Now we know. Yeah, I know a lot of people have been worrying, haven't they, the past week. But uh, put your mind at ease, they're absolutely fine. Mm. Mm. How else are you? I am else. <laughs> well, I'm good, thank you. Yeah, yeah, I've been to Wales for a few days. I've had a few gigs. I was back in Peterborough. We were in Peterborough. I saw that. For those in Lucas's inner circle, you would have seen he put quite a revealing photo on Facebook. What was the revealing photo? He revealed a ram was walking down his cul-de-sac. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, so uh, where I'm from in North Wales, there's a little like mountain. It's called the Great Orm. Orm is a Viking word for sea monster. When the Vikings came to invade and to uh, pillage, they saw this thing coming out of the sea. They thought it was a sea monster, but it was a mountain. Pillage and what else? And, <laughs> and drink. Anyway, and their goats live in the mountains. Mountain goats, right? Now, normally, they do not brave the, the town, the village, the city, they stay up there. But because of the coronavirus pandemic and everybody's sat in their little homes, not leaving them, the goats braved coming out and they'd be like in amongst the shops, they'd be in people's gardens, eating up the flowers. And even now when people are going back to the shops, the goats are like, we like doing this. And so they come through my street, which is probably about an hour's walk from the mountain. And uh, they just, like, stroll through and eat somebody's roses or whatever. Mm. Oh, they have a great time. Now, bloody big horns, this one, if you don't mind me saying. Somebody's roses. Yeah. What if you've got Quality Street? Oh, they'll have them as well. They don't <laughs> care. Toffee Penny, Mint Triangle. Mm. They'll have the lot, the greedy beggars. Now, Tom. What? Lawrence. What? What do you mean, what? Have you got any more stories for me? Yeah, Harry Potter. Is that, what, were you going to lead into that story anyway? What, the rundown? No, about the ram. No. Then what else were you going to say before I interrupted and brought that up? I was going to do the rundown. Wait, what was your story for this week? The, uh, the, about the storm and about me, a French teacher's uh, email. 
Oh, go on then, so the front door. Excuse me, last week, <laughs> last week, the best you could offer was that you'd shrunk your jacket in the wash. Don't you like my stories this week? I did like your stories this week. Do people recognise me? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Go on then, let's have your rundown. All right, I'm going to run you down like nobody's business. This is chapter four, back to the burrow. Everybody in the Dursley house is tense. Oh, the Weasleys are coming. They're going to be embarrassing. They're going to be wearing horrible robes. They're going to be, you know, mad magicking about. It's going to be horrendous. How are they getting here, Harry? Harry's like, oh, I don't know. Maybe by car. I don't know. Do I? So the time comes, five o'clock. They've not turned up. They're late. They're half an hour late. It's ridiculous. And suddenly they hear a bang and they're behind the fireplace, which has been closed up by an electrical fire. Oh, they can't get through. Oh, we can't get through. So in a few seconds, Mr. Weasley blasts the fireplace across the room, enters with Ron, Fred and George. Tries to make small talk with the Dursleys, but they are frightened. Whoa, it's a ginger man. What do we do? Fred and George go up to get Harry's suitcase. And on the way back, he drops some sweeties on the floor, some chockies. They get in the flute powder. Fred and George and Ron go away. And before Mr. Weasley and Harry leave, Dudley has eaten one of the chockies. Oh, the diet's not going well. He was tempted by the chocolate, but it's got an engorgement charm on it. And it turns his tongue into a massive foot-long purple slimy python. He's panicking. Aunt Petunia's trying to pull the tongue out of his mouth. Uncle Vernon starts throwing china plates at uh, Arthur Weasley. And Harry is enjoying himself. Mm. And then he gets into the fireplace. Mm. He says, burrow. Mm. And he is sent to the burrow. End of the chapter. Back to the burrow. I'm still... In a period where I'm savouring these chapters at the Dursleys. Especially yeah, this yeah, yeah. one, because it makes you remember. This was all gone from my memory, because I've seen the films more than I've read the books, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's just me. I've seen the films more than I've read the books. Yeah, I know, I know. And the Dursleys don't feature in the films, in this film. No, they don't. So this, I was like, oh, yeah. Book four, we're back, and... Magic has done something naughty to the Dursleys once again. Undeserved, might I add. Yes, Undeserved. yes. I think you're right. And, you know, at the end of this chapter, you know, I almost could shed a tear because I'm thinking, <laughs> are we only going to get three more times with the Dursleys in this book series? He almost shed a tear. Yeah. <laughs> almost shed a tear. What was I crying at today? I was... <laughs> I was. What was that I was sobbing at today? I was. Uh, I was watching Big Brother, Celebrity Big Brother 2007 <laughs> clips on my phone. Brilliant. And it was Shil Pachetti winning. Oh yeah! <laughs> After all that that racism <laughs> row and all that rubbish. Yeah. And I started shedding a tear. Going, <laughs> After all she's been through, she deserves it. <laughs> oh, oh yeah! With all that stuff with Jade Goody. Well, don't bring that up. Don't bring that up. <laughs> Don't bring that up. Oh, I was crying a tear about a, a you know a lady that survived World War Two. Oh yeah, the one with Hitler. Don't bring that up. <laughs> Don't bring Hitler up. <laughs> Let me mention World War Two without you saying anything about Hitler, please. Oh right. The chapter starts off and we get a little rundown of what gadgets Harry has. Yeah. He's oh got yeah. A cloak, broom. Map, right? He's got all them. Yeah. When most children have none. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Invisibility cloak, yeah. map that tells you where everyone is at Hogwarts. Yeah. <laughs> a broom. Yeah. The child with the most gadgets after him. Yeah. Is Neville with his remember all. <laughs> I know, yeah. <laughs> right. Everyone goes on and on and on about Harry saving the school every year. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, right, right. right. I would too if I had all them gadgets. I know. <laughs> how can he not? It's like James Bond, isn't it? Oh, I, how does James Bond escape every time? Because he's got a grenade in his pen. <laughs> Why? He's got all these things. He's got a watch that can bloody go through metal. But Harry, he's prime for a mugging. If word spreads what he's got in his suitcase, 
someone's got to be after him, grab all the <laughs> stuff. In his bag, he's got a map that can tell you where everyone is in Hogwarts. He's got the fastest broom in existence and a bloody deathly hallow. Mm. Christ, you'd make it mint. It just goes to show what a nice school Hogwarts is that no one's attempted to steal any of these things off him. Yeah. Had Harry gone to my school, uh, yeah. he wouldn't have kept these long. People would just nick things off each other. iPods, uh, people would bring in knives. Bloody uh, hell, yeah. Pe- people would bring in other weapons too. <laughs> Some people got drunk at school. Oh, yeah, I remember a few kids got drunk at my school. Mm. Naughty, naughty, you'll get courty. We, um... <laughs> what? I, didn't, I didn't do it in the voice. <laughs> I just what? did the quote. It's peeves, isn't it? I don't know about it. <laughs> I'm surprised. They're very trusting, Hogwarts, of these children. I'm surprised that they don't have their bags checked. On entry, because the amount of shit these kids bring into school. Exploding fireworks, sweets that make you ill. Mm-hmm. You're not bringing them in. <laughs> <laughs> Can I not bring these pandemic inducing chocolates? <laughs> no. What about these things that just blow up? Definitely not. I brought a vat of laxatives. Do you have constipation? <laughs> no. <laughs> then you don't need them. Mad, isn't it? I remember going on a school trip, leading the school trip, and one of the rules were you were not allowed to bring home any replicas of anything. So we were in like the World War Two museum, and sometimes they had like bullet replicas or gun replicas yeah. and stuff. You weren't allowed to bring any of that, even like a little old bullet. Clip on Hitler mustache. <laughs> Clip on Hitler mustache. <laughs> um, can I mention a World War Two museum without you bringing up a clip on Hitler moustache? <laughs> it's like they've got to have the bags checked. The, the stuff they come in with, it's like ridiculous. I can't believe they let them just, they just trust them to bring in whatever they can. Yeah, definitely. But even in that, uh, I think it's the one where Harry's eavesdropping, I think it's um, Half-Blood Prince when he gets in his cloak and he and uh, Draco stupefies him, and then he kicks him in his face. Oh, loud. yeah, yeah. Draco could have nicked his cloak at that point. Idiot. But he just left it on him. But like uh, that just goes to show they don't steal at Hogwarts. You don't steal. That's not what you do. You might hide a remember all on the roof. A bed on the roof. A <laughs> bed on the roof. <laughs> but, but you don't steal. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, have you seen that clip of the Australian Prime Minister? No. <laughs> He's talking about a gay marriage. He's like, as far as I'm concerned, eh? I'm, I'm all for it. Let a thousand blossoms bloom. But I ain't got <laughs> any time for it because four times a month someone gets eaten by a crocodile. <laughs> <laughs> Let the blossoms bloom. <laughs> but I'm not going to spend any time on it because four times a month someone gets eaten by a crocodile. <laughs> is that what the Prime Minister of Australia is concerned with? Right, forget about the economy. Let's get these bloody crocs sorted out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm picking up good vibrations. He's giving me excitation. Vernon is concerned to Harry is they're not going to be wearing silly clothes, are they? Are they going to be dressed in the normal way? <laughs> yeah. They should be. Statutes of secrecy and all that. They should be wearing muggle clothes if they're in a muggle cul-de-sac yeah. estate. Because the whole idea is you're supposed to not arouse any suspicion whatsoever that you are a member of the wizarding world. Mm. But, like, people are walking around all the time. Remember in book one, there was a man in a violet top hat that bowed at Harry. Oh. Why is he doing that? <laughs> He's a wizard in the Muggle world, right? What, what's he doing next week? Walking around Saudi Arabia in a mankini. Oh, you're not supposed to wear that round here. Behave yourself. <laughs> you're not supposed to wear that round here. <laughs> Said the Saudi Arabian. You know, get Bora out of here. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's like, you know the rules. Why are you walking around a shopping centre dressed as Gandalf? Yeah. You're going to draw attention to yourself, you nits. <laughs> Hidden in plain sight. It's funny, though, because Vernon says, I hope you told them to dress properly, these people. <laughs> As if that's a request Harry can put in. <laughs> Ron, what's your mum wearing? 
<laughs> no, 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 no. Imagine if when, like, I don't know, next time I was, I was going to see your dad and I said to you, I'd like him to wear a bowler hat, <laughs> tweed jacket and a pair of red trousers. Yeah. You put it forward to him? Definitely not. <laughs> Imagine that. Me around your mum and dad's house. Your mum your mum comes downstairs ready to go out. You're not going out like that, are you? <laughs> Get back upstairs. Put something proper on. I wouldn't dare. It's not a nice thing to he do. I wouldn't dare. I would not dare. The Dursleys are uptight about the Weasleys coming to that house. Yeah. Right? I think if they're so uptight... They should have arranged a drop-off elsewhere if they didn't want to draw attention to their home. A hundred percent. Because they're like, oh, we don't want to be ferrying you about anywhere. Harry, just wait at the bottom of the street. Yeah. <laughs> they don't well, have to come to the house. Well, just drive to the closest little chef. Drive to the closest little chef. No one's going to be in there. Yeah. Yeah, Vernon's reasoning is ridiculous because they are so on edge and so tense. But they would rather that than drive him five minutes somewhere. Or like... A- Swimming pool on a Friday morning. Mm. Having picks up then. Yeah. Drop the kid off <laughs> at the pool. <laughs> Do that, Vernon. Drop the kid off at the pool. I'm warning you. What? <laughs> I'm warning you. It was an open goal. I had to kick it. Mm. Dudley is running his hand over his bottom and walking sideways. Love it. Now, they say it's because he's having memories of Hagrid giving him a piggy tail in yeah. the first book, where yeah. he had to have it surgically removed in London. Has he got a scar from that operation? <laughs> <laughs> I'm imagining in 20 years' time when he's married, you know, one day, you know, they're sat in bed and his wife goes, Dudley, do you mind me asking? Um, you've never mentioned it before, but... Why do you have two anuses? <laughs> <laughs> I've noticed it a couple of times when you've bent down uh, that you do have a second anus. I just want to ask, what's that all about? I can't say. I can't say. I'm sworn to secrecy. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And Harry as well, like, he has a go at Vernon wearing a suit. So Vernon dresses up in a suit. Many people would think this was a gesture of goodwill. But, well, that's nice. Many would think it's a gesture of goodwill, but Harry knew he was just trying to show the Weasleys up. Harry would be having a go at a Vernon, whatever he wore. Vernon was disrespectful wearing shorts and a T-shirt. No, but Dudley's running his um, hand over his bottom and walking sideways. Oh, yeah, yeah. They say it's because of the time he had a tail put on him. But maybe it's just a hip new dance. Hip new dance? Yeah. Yeah. Why does his two hands have to be an arse helmet? The wiggle bum rub. The wiggle bum rub. We've all done it down the club. (laughs) The wiggle bum rub. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. You rub the bum on that bit. Mm. Now they're late. Very late. Five minutes, ten minutes, yeah. They're very late, and they have no excuse. <laughs> no. They come via the flu network, which is instance. Where the hell are you? Where have you been? Oh, stuck upstairs, were you? Why haven't you been in the in the fire? Half an hour on time. Didn't like it. And also, yeah, like, like it's not as if they've been in traffic. You know, they could no. have. Like, they haven't even had to get in a motor. They've literally had to walk to their own fireplace. Have you had such a busy morning, Weasleys, on a Sunday? <laughs> I know, well, this is at five Sorry, o'clock as well. Did them sausages take too long cooking themselves? <laughs> <laughs> oh, those dishes won't wash themselves. They will, and they do. Where the hell have you been? <laughs> also, I don't understand why all four of them need to come. They're just literally picking him up. Oh, no. I was annoyed at this. Yeah. Mr. Weasley and maybe Ron together. You don't need Fred and George turning up. Mr. Weasley and maybe Molly. Yeah. Weasley. Weasley. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case you thought we were talking about another one. Yeah. I'm on the Dursley side. I am. Don't be late. It's rude. If you think you're going to get invited to dinner because you're late, you've got another thing coming. That is mental. That was a hypothesis that Ms. Um, Petunia had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They th- she thought they were being purposely late as like a way to look cool so that they would be invited to a dinner party, which I think, 
I am not understanding your rationale. Like, please show you're working out. <laughs> I know. Petunia, because that is mental. I know. You are getting no method marks <laughs> for that answer because we've no idea how you got there. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't even know. Like, yeah, because how would the Weasleys know when they eat? Why would them being like suggest they want to eat with you? Doesn't make any sense. <clears throat> and the Weasleys are so rude. They're behind somebody's fireplace and it says. A loud hammering of fists on the board. You're at someone's house and you're a guest. You're hammering against the wall. (laughs) Would you do that in your own home? Maybe if you're a trap. (laughs) So, what's happened is they've travelled by flu powder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Though the Dursleys do not have an active fireplace. It is boarded up and in front of the fire is an electric fire. Yes. So, they've travelled by flu and now stuck behind the boarded up fire. In what way are they up the chimney? What, there's no what space is back there. I know for four of them to be in there. Four of them, four <laughs> lanky ginger souls. I know. It must be hell of a hell of a cramped. Horrifying. Wasn't it? People yeah, yeah, are yeah. in the walls. Not just people. Red-haired people. I would scream. I would scream. Yeah. I would scream. I'd scream if I was a Weasley. I would also scream if I was a Dursley. Mm-hmm. Something. If some. Do you understand how horrifying someone in the wall is? is? <laughs> it is absolutely horrific. Imagine yeah. if I'd cemented you into a wall. Oh, I don't like that. <laughs> Oof. That's very scary. Yeah, yeah. Oof. Honestly, the Dursleys have every right to be frightened throughout this chapter. There are many things that happen that absolutely scare them. The next thing, uh, Harry's explaining to Mr. Weasley. Mr. Weasley, Mr. Weasley, they've covered up the fireplace with an electric fire. Eclectic, you say? Oh, I like eclectic things. Right, shut up. You know what electricity is. You work for the Muggle Department for Ministry of Magic. Fair enough if you've not heard of snow globes or like, but he made some murders. <laughs> electricity, you know it. You know what that is. Stop being daft. You're doing it for attention, aren't you? You're doing it for attention. You think by playing stupid, it will make Vernon like you more, yeah. don't you? But it won't work. It He's will not figured work. you out. Yeah. <laughs> you're an idiot. I'm going to record you saying what you're saying and take it to your boss. How do you think your boss would feel if you don't know what electricity is and you're leading the Muggle artifact department? Sounds like someone's going to get a sacking. I bloody hope so, <laughs> Dafty. <laughs> what are you doing? Then the most ridiculous thing happens where they shoot the fireplace across the room with a massive bang. You could have killed somebody. If that would have hit Vernon or Petunia or Dudley, they would be dead. Mm. A coal fire smacking somebody in the head. Very irresponsible. Very naughty. Well, that's the thing. Um, People have this issue where they think if they can resolve an issue, it doesn't matter if they... Wizard seems to think if they can break... If they can fix it, they are allowed to break it. No. No. If you're Dynamo coming up to me (laughs) and putting me phone in a bockle of walker... Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're a magician, you come up to me... Yeah. And you smack me phone on the floor and break it... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then hand me a new one. It's like, no... Now you'd give me a job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I've got to, like, add all them contacts. My photos are lost. Yeah. Sure, I've got some resolve, but you shouldn't have done it in the first place. Yeah. Shame on you. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Some people live by the motto of, act now, apologise later. Yeah. I am not of that (laughs) way. Yeah. Ask for permission first. Yeah. So you don't have to apologise. That's the way I am. That's the way he is. Ask for permission, and then you don't have to apologise. But yeah, they're there destroying things. It's not nice to destroy things. I'll tell you what I did once that's just come to my little mind. When I was about, hmm, eight, nine, ten years old. Imagine him. Imagine me, listeners. Eight, nine, ten years old. Bean-shaped head. Yeah. Black hair. Mm Hmm. Dressed as a goalie. Dressed as a goalie. <laughs> I got big gloves on, knee pads, shorts. Uh, <laughs> I did a show, right, where I, and I used to like doing magic. So I did a show where I'd like 
copy a few jokes I'd heard off the telly and I'd do a few magic tricks I'd remember it with me little um, I used to do one where I was like now I'm going to do an impression of an Eskimo having a wee and then I would uh, go like that and then I'd ice cubes would come out of me hand <laughs> as if I was weeing ice cubes used to do that uh, what was the other one uh, I went to a bar a fat man was sat at the bar he said, you're round. And I said, no, you are. That was another one. Just a joke I've, I'd heard somebody say on yeah, the telly. Yeah. Found yeah. it funny. Um, what else? Um, what, oh, what's the what's the Fred Flintstone one? People in Dubai don't like the Flintstones, but people in Abu Dhabi do. Don't know about that. Yeah, I, don't know about I remember that. I used to tell, I remember seeing Jimmy Carr on the Royal Variety performance, which yeah. really shot him into fame when I was a little boy. And I remember telling these jokes the next day at school. And looking back on them, I don't know why they were in his tight ten. Yeah, yeah, they're bad. <laughs> well, it's not his best. Getting on a plane and a woman saying to him, Do you want a window seat or aisle? And he said, I'll take a seat, please. Oh, I like that one. Yeah, but to say it on telly. <laughs> Reminds me of a joke where someone's ringing up from a medical helpline. and uh, No, no, like um, someone's ringing up on like an advice helpline and they go, well, have you ever had any arguments, stroke issues with your partner? Yeah. And I said, well, I've never had a stroke, so take that one out. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, the story I was telling was about destroying things. Right? Oh, yeah. And during this thing, I got this bloke up. Now, he, he he was a plant. He was somebody's dad. And I'd deliberately given him a tie from the costume department of yeah, the, yeah. the drought of the theatre, right? And the whole idea was that I cut up his tie, put it into a bag, and then pull out a different coloured tie. It was yeah. a little magic trick, right? People were shocked that I got a pair of scissors and cut up this man's tie. Okay. The atmosphere, they were laughing. They were horrified that I'd got a big pair of scissors and cut this bloke's tie up. Uh, they didn't know it was a plant, you see. But, uh, he's mad as a kid. You're like, yeah, I'll just cut up a tie. But even now, I'd be like, I'm not cutting up a tie from the costume department. That's like sacrilege. Chopping up a tie with a pair of scissors. In like five bits. So you didn't replace it? It was, it, the joke was, I put it in, it was supposed to come back together. First time you pull it out, it's still in bits. The second time I pull it out, it was like a clown mm. tie, like a big, like, colourful, spotted thing. And that was the joke, that it was the wrong yeah, thing. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, no, never replaced the tie for the drama department. They just said, yeah, you can uh, cut one up if you want. Oh, that's fun. fair enough. You got, if, you got consent. I got consent. If you got permission. That's what we've been saying this whole time. Permission. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Weasley, come in. If you want to, you know, cut up Vernon's tie, you got to ask him. Yeah. You've got to ask him. Uncle Vernon, and that's what I hope you call him, Mr. Weasley. Uncle Vernon, can I cut up your tie? <laughs> Please. Thank you. Good night. Exploding the fire, it's not nice, as we just said. Not also, nice. So he's breaking laws to do such a thing. Yeah. It is against the law to connect a muggle chimney to the flu network. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yet he did so. Yeah. He's pulled in a favour with a friend. He's always doing shit like this, <laughs> Mr. Weasley. He's pissing about with magic cars in his garage. He shouldn't be doing that. He's got this weird collection of plugs and batteries. I'm sure he shouldn't have them. And now he's, like, making the flu network dodgy. Yeah, why, the, why, it, you can't, why can't he have a battery? Surely he can, have a, he can buy one, can't he? Unless he's robbed it. I suppose so, but I don't know. It's a bit suspicious, isn't it? Why would you collect, collect batteries? Mm. But yeah, do you collect anything? Badges. Do you? Oh, that's nice. That's a nice thing to Some collect. badges, some enamel, some otherwise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How about yourself? Um, I don't. I don't really actively collect stuff. I like buying DVDs. You might say I collect DVDs, but like it's them? not for a, to collect them; it's to watch them. Do you like them special features? I, I, do you know what? I've, I would never look at a special feature. On a really? DVD. Yeah. Not interested. I used at to all. love uh, DVDs for special features. Yeah. I remember. I actually remember the Harry Potter DVD, the first one, having special. You like could get through Diagon Alley and do some little games that were very primitive because you're just using like the selection buttons on the 
the DVD remote. Yeah, yeah. So I remember that, but uh, yeah, no, I'd, I would never listen to a director's commentary, I don't think, or mm, maybe deleted scenes, but again, I wouldn't choose to do it, I don't think. Mm. Yeah, we, I would. we I'd... might do with Pot- Potter Vision, but... Don't I've know. listened to uh, many a director's commentary. Oh, yeah, is it interesting? What kind of things do they say? Oh, that was supposed to be green until we did it blue. That's, yeah, that's good. No. What do they say then? Stories from set. Stories from set. They interesting insight. Interesting you know. insight. None of that green and blue crap you, you're trying to <laughs> pedal. <laughs> I'm always peddling green really and blue crap. Do you really think that hundreds of thousands of hours of director's commentary would have been recorded for all, the, all of these DVDs that have been released in the wor- world for it to be boring? Yeah. <laughs> well that settles that <laughs> I'll tell you what I'll pick, a, I'll pick a film before next time I'll watch the director's commentary and I'll let you know thank you thank you that's good manners the, you have it's the commitment I have to uh, the Potter Vision podcast hear that listeners he commits to us <laughs> I'm committed to you eternally Fred and George sorry Harry goes my suitcase is upstairs Can you stop me there please stop me there you knew you were leaving today why is your trunk upstairs? God, do you know what? <laughs> I thought you were talking to me, and I got scared. <laughs> it sounded really threatening, and I was like, "What is what? What am I supposed to have done?" Harry, you knew yeah. today was the day you were leaving. Yeah, my trunk's upstairs. Yeah, bring it down. Yeah, in the half hour that you've been waiting for us, you couldn't bring it down the stairs. <laughs> you knew we'd get it for you, didn't you? Lord Fauntleroy. He's a little posh boy that has people doing what he wants for him. It's from a comic. <laughs> <laughs> Please look out for further references to Dennis the Menace and Ur Willy. He open palm pointed at me. <laughs> as if to say, this sentence is over. Enjoy. <laughs> That's the end. <laughs> yeah. The Dursleys... Did not say goodbye. No. Can I can I say something before that though, if if you'll let me? I will allow it. Very unorthodox, but I will allow it. <laughs> if you'll let me speak. So Harry says, My suitcase is upstairs. And Fred and George go, Oh, we'll go get it for you. And Harry strongly suspects it's because they want to have a glimpse of Dudley, who Harry talks about so much. Yes. This is awful because we know that Harry just talks about Dudley's weight. That's all he ever talks about him. <laughs> so he's obviously built him up as this circus freak that they need to look at him. He's as wide as he is tall. Have a look at him, boys. <laughs> he's a human chode. Right. Come on. Any chance to slip in chode with you? No, it isn't. But, Harry, this is horrible. Like, and as well, when... Uh, Harry goes to Mr. Weasley, goes, oh, this is Dudley. He then looks to Ron, and the urge to laugh was overwhelming. <laughs> They're looking at each other. <laughs> You're two nasty little boys, aren't you? <laughs> this is my nephew. Uh, <laughs> this is my cousin. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> You're horrible little boys, aren't you? <laughs> nasty. <laughs> Admit it, you're horrible. Admit it, Harry. Now you're wrong. It's safe to say that me and Lucas have been very pro Harry and uh, It's safe to say that me and Lucas have been very pro Harry and Ron for the past three books. Yeah, we've given them nothing but praise. (laughs) I'm beginning to think our opinions of them are beginning to change. We're starting to see their true colours. That they're a lot more nasty than they would like to make out. Well, the interesting thing is, is that. Dudley is being less horrible, and yet they're being more horrible. The balance has shifted. The seesaw has swung. Dudley, and I hope you don't mind me saying this. I I don't. It's your right. He's done nothing wrong this book. Nothing. He's even eating grapefruit. What a Mm. great thing to do. He's just been a bit grumpy. He did throw his PlayStation out the window. I don't agree with that. Well, that was previously. Previously. In this book. Yeah. Fair enough. He's not done anything naughty. Yeah. So I feel like them just laughing at his existence, which seems to be what this is, is uh, is very bad. Mm. Not nice. 
We don't like it, Year 7s. We don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> the Dursleys did not say goodbye to Harry. No, no, no. It's a wonderful moment for Arthur Weasley standing up for Harry. Excuse me. Harry's just, your nephew's just said goodbye to you. Yeah. And then um, Harry says, no, it's all right. He's, no, it's not all right. Say goodbye to him. And then what does Vernon say? Goodbye then. Goodbye then. Farewell. <laughs> Our readers in. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> so long. Farewell. Do you know they've remade um, West Side Story? Oh, I thought you were going to say Sound of Music then. Have they? Oh, that, no. Let them remake Sound of Music. We'd all like to see it. They've remade West Side Story and uh, R.I.P. Stephen Sondheim, who died this week, who wrote the lyrics to West Side Story. Bringing that up for? You brought West Side Story up. How dare you bring up the writer of the lyrics <laughs> to the musical I have mentioned? I think Mr. Weasley sounds vaguely threatening. Here. Yeah, because he's holding his wand. Yeah. It's gone. And that is a wooden gun that wizards use. Yeah? <laughs> a gun is a metal wand. A wand is a wooden gun. That's how it works. He's there holding his wooden gun. You aren't going to see your nephew till next year. Surely you're going to say goodbye. Goodbye then. Say it like you mean it. <laughs> Give your nephew a kiss on the lips. <laughs> kiss him. Good. <laughs> goodbye. Um, Dudley, greedy little boy. He takes a sweet that one of the twins had purposely spilled on the floor. Oh, yeah. Um, eats it, his tongue swells to be a foot long. Horrifying. If that was me... Oh. What? This sentence. What? It sent shivers down my spine. Dudley was kneeling beside the coffee table and he was gagging and spluttering on a foot long, purple, slimy thing that was protruding from his mouth. Mother in heaven... <laughs> What have I just read? I, you'd be thinking, I'm going to die. Yeah. Swollen tongue. I'm going to <laughs> die. I'm going to suffocate and die. You can you can suffocate on your own tongue normally. Mm. If you're not careful. <laughs> right. You can swallow your tongue and die. But Arthur Weasley, he's so quick to brush it off. Like yeah. it's normal. He's like, he is. I, he's an awful parent. He's just stood there scolding Vernon Dursley. Yeah, for yeah, not yeah. saying goodbye yeah. promptly. Yeah. Right, when <laughs> Mr. Weasley is allowing his son to mutilate other people and then brush it off as a prank. <laughs> oh, they're just having a bit of fun, aren't oh, they? Oh, he's always at that. He's quite the prankster, our boy. He's quite <laughs> the prankster. Not appropriate. <laughs> oh, the other week he burnt a hole through someone else's tongue. You consider yourself lucky. <laughs> Well, Petunia's there putting Dudley in the recovery position. If he doesn't swallow his own tongue... God, I'd pass out out of fear. Bloody hell. Do you know what? Imagine this scene in the film. <coughs> People are saying, you know, I've heard rumours, oh, you know, the Dursleys weren't in the fourth film because of, you know, the contracts, because of the, the payment they would get. No, no, no. I don't think highly renowned actress Fiona Shaw would want to pull a foot-long tongue out of Dudley's mouth mm. on camera. Good gravy. Good Lord. Harry gets onto the lovely green flames. And may I quote? Harry put one foot forward into the green flames, which felt pleasantly like warm breath. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> lovely. <laughs> warm <laughs> breath. Oh, I love that. Oh, excuse me, Tom. Yeah. I'm feeling a bit down to today. I've had a, <laughs> I've had a bit of a tough day. Uh, you wouldn't mind breathing on me, would you? Make me feel a bit better. <laughs> no problem. <sighs> oh, that's lovely, that warm breath, my favourite. Would you like it warmer? Yes, please. <sighs> <sighs> oh, lovely. I do like that. That's nice. Harry, you're a freak. <laughs> Harry, you're a freak. <laughs> it's funny, though, because um, Mr. Weasley brushes it off as a prank. And I, for one, 
I don't like pranks. Have you been pranked? Uh, I got a prank phone call once uh, that I never found out who it was from. When I was about 17, 16, maybe. What did they say? Uh, I can't even remember. Uh, it was that uneventful. But it was just somebody who was clearly like laughing behind the phone. Yeah. Uh, and they that was the times. issue. When I got, I got prank phone calls a few times. Yeah. But the issue was... Like, they'd ask for you. They'd be like, oh, it's Tom there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or Lucas in your scenario. And then they'd, like, say daft things down the phone. But it wouldn't it wouldn't be like a little routine like you'd seen in films of The Simpsons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Know? They wouldn't say, is your refrigerator running or anything like that. They'd yeah, just yeah, yeah. be saying weird things to you. <laughs> I know. Cause like we're Psychologically tormenting you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I remember there was a thing on Channel 4 called the phone jacker or the face jacker or something. Oh, yeah. And he always had like a script that he'd stick to. And then on later on, it'd be Jacker After Dark. <laughs> oh, do I remember that? <laughs> was that like naughty ones? No, I just made it up. Just made it up. Uh, but yeah, like, <laughs> you get a prank call from a kid and it's just like unintelligible nonsense mixed with laughter. And it's like, how are you even finding this funny? You haven't, you haven't confused me in any well no you have confused me if you haven't tricked me into doing anything or saying anything yeah you're just laughing at the fact that you're ringing me pretending to be somebody else yeah why not just why not just do that why not just ring me as a character yeah. hello it's Ian McKellen <laughs> that's nice Ian McKellen that's funny <laughs> you know you don't have to be odd about it just have fun I got pranked once at uh, university in my third year yeah I got a notification on my phone saying, you've had a parcel delivered, but it's been left with your neighbour. Okay. So I was out for uni for the whole day, so I sent a text to the group chat saying, would someone be able to knock on next door and just get my parcel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was getting back late. Yeah. Um, And they replied saying, no. (laughs) So I get back. Yeah. And I go, I go, did anyone get the parcel? He went, no. So I get the piece of paper yeah knock on next door I was like hi I think I had a parcel delivered here and they looked puzzled these girls they were like oh yeah but someone's already come to get it yeah yeah and I was like right so I was like okay go back into my house and they go (laughs) we've already claimed it for you it was here all along what a good prank you've just wasted my time and you've bothered next door (sighs) why have we never seen that one on Impractical Jokers hey while he's at uni, accept his parcel and then say you haven't. It's boring. That's bo- boring prank, isn't it? Funnily enough, though, I did a prank on you last week. What was the prank? Do I remember? You, you, I don't think you had a single clue. <laughs> what was it? So, as a gesture of Christmas kindness. Yeah. I purchased 24 cans of Coke Zero for Lucas Kirkby to consume while he's here. Okay. Yeah. The first day, <laughs> he sits down in the office and he puts his hand up. He goes, can I coke zero, please? Yeah. And I'm like, sure. So I go downstairs and I get him one. Give it him. He cracks it. Yeah. He has a couple of glugs. Right? Yeah. He leaves after the podcast. I go pick up the can to throw it away. The bitch is full. <laughs> <laughs> the bitch is yeah. full. Yeah. I'm thinking, well, how many times are we going to do this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I take the can and I go put it in the fridge. <laughs> Was it the same one the second time? You came round <laughs> a few days later. Yeah. I go to you, can I coke, pal? You go, yes, please. <laughs> I go get it, put it in front of you. You start glugging it. Mm, mm, mm. This flat can of coke. <laughs> I love flat coke. Licking, you, licking your lips going, it's nice, it's nice. <laughs> and you left it with the coke still in your hand, che- yeah. cheersing me with it. Thank you, thank you. That's a lovely prank. <laughs> <laughs> Again, we're having had that on Practical Jokers. But for me, I love a flat can of coke. I like flat drinks mm. that have been fizzy prior. I like my my drinks like I like my earth. Flat. Flat. (laughs) I want to cycle and fall off the edge. Vernon starts chucking China figures at him. What else can he do? These twins have made his son choke on his own tongue. These twins have made his son choke on his own tongue. The dad has shot 
the coal fireplace across the room. He is now brandishing a wooden gun at him. Grab something and chuck it. That's what I'd be doing. I'd be scared for my life. Shitting myself, if you don't mind me saying, year nines. <laughs> <laughs> I can say that now. You're in year nine. Yeah, That's the end of it. But can I say... Yes. I was a bit disappointed at this. This didn't feel like the crescendo climax of the Dursleys that we've had in the past three books. You know, I'm thinking, book one, all the letters coming in, the shack on the in the sea, Hagrid turning up, giving Dudley a piggy tail. I'm thinking of the flying car rescue, Vernon falling out the window, that kind of... I'm imagining Aunt Marge blowing up and flying off into the sky. Mm. For me, this feels like a bit of a step down. It's not as much of a, a big ending, Dudley having a big tongue and... No. That's it. Yeah, I was a bit disappointed, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, that, that is going to affect my rating. I, I, I can't avoid it. It's going to affect my rating at the end of the chapter. I feel like you just said your closing statements then without realising you haven't heard what the rating system was. Oh, yeah, that's, <laughs> maybe, maybe I did. Maybe I did. Right. Yeah. How many choking little boys <laughs> on a living room carpet are you giving this out of five? Oh, well, as I said, uh, it didn't feel like the climax I was looking for. Have we got here all that again? No. <laughs> <laughs> We've only got three more times with the Dursleys. I'm hoping for something more exciting next time, although it will be. I've just remembered what happens. Um, but yeah, that affected it. Um, it was all right, this chapter. Um, I'm, you know, I agree that they took it out of the films, probably the right decision with so much else going on. Uh, but I do like the Dursleys. Mm. I'm feeling more compassion towards the Dursleys than I ever have. Harry being Mr. Rude Boy Boy, can you get it up? And Ron as well. And, the, the, you know, I feel like Fred and George definitely put the sweet on the floor on purpose so that he would eat it. It was all right. I'm going to give it three little boys choking on their tongues on the carpet out of five. Mm. Now, as the listeners all know, my favourite chapters are the chapters with the Dursleys. But unfortunately, this was being ripped away from me with the entrance of the Weasleys. Oh, yeah. Bringing their insanity and disrupting their lives. Yeah. They come in bolsterous, awful, mutilating a boy. <laughs> yes. Making me sad. Yeah. We've departed from our gorgeous normality our muggles if you will and we are being sprung into the frantic wizard world yes made me sad it made me mad and it made me glad of the time i've already had with the dursleys oh yeah for that reason i'm giving this two choking boys out of five can't blame you right are you ready for this week's in Enchanting segment quiz. Quiz, quiz, key, quiz, quiz, key, quiz, 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 quiz,
Do you know what? I knew you might have had the wrong answer. That's why I explained <laughs> how, my own answer. How fucking dare you? <laughs> but you, you did! You knew I might have had the wrong answer. <laughs> How have I got... That's not handwriting, pal. That's printed. You've typed it up. An inkjet printer had gone... Oh, listeners. Justice for the quiz. Sore loser. It's safe to say (laughs) you're a sore loser. Any drop-ins? Quiz, 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 quiz
Hey! That was perfect! Lovely! Not only Ginger Pixel, but Santa Hagrid. Father Christmas. I didn't know Ginger and Hagrid were such friends. Well, <laughs> you know, if he's a, he was a fan of ale, I'm sure he's met him down the, down the pub. It was a fantastic impression. It was a brilliant impression. <laughs> had a couple of uh, quotes from the films. It was very fun. But the question was, what will we be buying Harry, Ron, Hermione and other characters for Crimbo? Mm. Mm. Ron, yeah. the boy definitely needs a self-help book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd give him how to win friends and influence people. Oh, it yeah. Might really help him become a better listener or at least become a, help him become a master manipulator. Oh, well, he needs to look no further than his mate Harry. He is the master manipulator. Uh, for Harry, he's got everything a little boy could need. Not- I would get Harry some lessons in grace and decorum. And just stop being so nasty to your uncle. What about Hermione? What does she need? Copy off my answer there with the self-help book. That's fine, isn't it? <laughs> Sharing ideas. It's a compliment. <laughs> Dumbledore, I feel, definitely needs just some deodorant. He's got to stink. What are you saying that for? What? Old people don't stink. Old oh, people. come on. Of course they do. I don't think old people sweat, do they? <laughs> They're like babies. They give up on sweating. No. I What's this? This can't be true. Have you ever sniffed an old person and the smell of sweat? I've never sniffed an old person. Oh, you're missing out. Am I? <laughs> Good fun. After this, yeah. I'm taking you to the local bowling club. <laughs> and I'm going to parade you around. Yeah. I think it'll sort you out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I once uh, got uh, told off for filming a comedy sketch on a bowling green. I was filming uh, just somebody chasing somebody else around a bowling green, and uh, somebody came out and said, you're ruining the grass. Oh, really? Yeah, and got annoyed. How yeah. old were you? Ugh. 14, 15. Fair enough. Fair enough. A bit of me thought you might have been 23. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I was a young whippersnapper, if you don't mind me saying. I don't mind you saying. There we go. Well, that was our Hedwig's Droppings. This has been the Pottervision Podcast. Thank you so, so much for listening. We are going back on tour in the new year. We're in Brighton. We're in Bristol. We're in London. We're in Manchester. We're in Telford. We're in Belfast. We're in Swansea. We're in Denby. We're in Leeds. Uh, We may be somewhere else that I have forgotten to say. We're in Leicester. Um... Most of the ticket links are up there. There's a couple that we're still uh, waiting on, but they should be available pretty soon. Come and see us. That'd be lovely. Also, if you want to join us on our Patreon, uh, we're having a bit of a revamp this month. Uh, there'll be a few extra things available. There'll be some uh, some things as well. We're going to be sending out some Christmas cards uh, this month, so that'll be fun. Uh, so please join us on our Patreon. You'll also be supporting us. And there's loads of bonus content uh, the first two parts of uh, us discussing the third film are already up there. There's loads of fun things going on. Check it out, patreon.com slash pottervision. Also, leave us a five-star review if you haven't already. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we're on Instagram. Follow us on there, that would be lovely. Otherwise, just thank you for listening. Thank you for being you. We love you a lot. Next week, we're on episode 62, and it's chapter five of A Goblet of Fire, Weasley's Wizard Wheezes. You have been a nasty quiz master, Tom Lawrenson. And you have been a sore loser, Lucas Kirkby. Goodbye. Pottervision. Thank you for listening to the Pottervision podcast. The music was performed by Jack Evans. If you'd like bonus content and to support the show, you can visit patreon.com forward slash Pottervision.